Welcome back to Sports Sunday. We have a Royals Hall of Famer in the house. It is Jeff Montgomery, now of the Fox Sports Net pregame show. How's that gig going for you? Well, I'm really enjoying it. I uh, have an official capacity back with the club again, so it's nice to kind of get back in the fold and have an opportunity to, you know, get more involved. For about 10 years, I was out of the game. Uh, didn't really follow the team nearly as close as I do now as a result of, you know, doing the pregame shows with uh, Fox Sports Kansas City. So it's really nice to get back in. I've really enjoyed it. You've watched a lot of Royals baseball then this summer. So tell me, we know they're a little bit better than they were a year ago. They have some young pieces. But do the pieces kind of fit right? Are they that much closer to being a contender? I think they're getting closer. I think if you look at what they've done uh, through the draft, through some of their acquisitions, they've put themselves in a position to get better. Uh, I think it's going to be difficult to tell from the win-loss record at the end of the season how much progress they made. But I think just watching them day in, day out, they have made some progress. I think you know those three starting pitchers in the middle. With uh, obviously we haven't seen what we wanted to see from Zach Greinke, but Luke Hochaver I think has made some progress. Although being injured now, uh, I think he'll get right back on track. I think that's kind of a short-term deal. Brian Bannister I think is really starting to establish himself as a more consistent starting pitcher. And Kyle Davies is still that mysterious guy. He has the ability to go out there and uh, and, and be dominant at times, be real good at times, and he will have those lapses with his command. And you know, I, I think this year will be telltale for him. Between now and the end of the season, I think it's important for him to really establish himself as a guy that they can count on to go out there you know, four or five times uh, in a row and put some good numbers up. Now, Hochaver's kind of the key, I think, maybe for this year, watching what he does the rest of this year. If he keeps going with these positive outings that he's had a, as of recently before he got hurt, that's got to be huge for them because he's probably their number two starter of the future, isn't he? Well, he's, he's the guy that has the ability to be that, that guy that's behind Zach Greinke and can provide that stability, can have the dominance at times and, and, and gobble up a lot of innings as well. Uh, I think we look back to last year, we expected Billy Butler and Alex Gordon to have consistent seasons to really establish themselves as big league players. Last year, Billy Butler did that. He's carrying forward again. This year, we haven't seen that from Alex Gordon. I think, again, this year, that was key for those three middle starters to have that chance to do that. And, and we've seen it out of Luke, and I think, again, he's a guy that can really give the starting rotation that boost to have that two, three guy uh, behind uh, Zach Greinke. And hopefully Zach will get back to normal the second half, uh, get some run support, wins the ball game. Now, Mike Avilos has been a key part of this offense, but defensively he's really kind of struggled at second. And does it kind of baffle you that he seemed to be so much better at short than he is at second? You know, it's a, it's a different position. You see guys go from third base to first base. It's, you know, catching the ball, don't have that long throw. Uh, but it's still, it's a different position. And, and oftentimes you think it's going to be easy. Until you do it for an extended period of time, whether it be you know an entire season or a big portion of a season, I think it's really hard to evaluate how a guy is going to take on to that. Uh, you know, we know that the Royals signed their number one draft choice, who is at some point is going to play shortstop. So Mike Avila is probably going to be a, a guy that's going to settle in at second base uh, if he's able to provide that steady defense that is required for that position. We know what he can do with the bat. Uh, we've seen him rebound from his injury. Uh, again, I think just a consistent play at second base will hopefully make him a better second baseman. Dayton Moore's counting on this young wave of talent coming up from the minor leagues. Until these guys are here, we're probably not going to have a division winning team until those guys get up here. That being said, how active would you be if you were the GM with this trade deadline? Because you have a lot of guys, the Scott Putsenics, the Jose Guillens, maybe even a David DeJesus, who probably aren't going to be here when this team's ready to actually start making playoff runs. Well, of the three players you mentioned, I really like David DeJesus, uh, you know, to be in the fold when that, when that time does come. If that time comes in the next two or three years, I would really like to see David, David DeJesus be in the mix for that. But uh, based on what Scott Pesednik and, like you mentioned, Jose Guillen's done as of late, I think they're very viable tools. I don't think anyone, in the, any Royals fan would be disappointed if either of the two of those three players were traded to, to bring in some prospects for the future. Maybe some guys that can have uh, more of an immediate impact over the next year or two, but guys that are going to be able to be around once this team is in a position uh, to kind of finish off the plan that Dayton Moore put in place three or four years ago and be able to win and be a contender. DeJesus obviously is a big dilemma for everybody, though, because you have three options. One, keep him and then let him walk in a year or two after he's done with his contract, get some draft compensation picks, trade him or sign him long term. Out of those three options, it sounds like you would like to maybe even see him try and sign him long term. I would. I'd like to see him sign long term. I think he's a guy that can do a lot of good things. He can play a lot of out, outfield positions. Uh, and he, he gives you the flexibility to do a lot with whatever pieces you do have. And, and he, he's the longest tenured Royal. He's a guy that's uh, established himself as, as a steady, consistent player. He's not a guy that's going to be off the charts, although you look at some of his 
offensive numbers this year. He's been off the charts during the streak, especially since his, his young son's been born. So, uh, you know, he has the ability to be that type of player. Uh, and again, I think if you've got that player and you have the ability to keep him, and I feel certain David is, a, is the type of player who wants to stay in, uh, in a Royals uniform, I think you take advantage of that and keep him in the mix unless you are just overwhelmed with someone or a multiple, you know, amount of players can come in and, and, and be those long-term players. You worried about Gil Mesh? He's ever going to be back to what he was. I mean, once those shoulder problems start and back troubles with him as well, it, sometimes it just never ends. Well, it's it's very difficult to predict where you know uh, Gil's going to end up, you know, during the course of this season. Uh, he has another year left on his contract, so hopefully between now and the end of the season, they'll figure out whether he's a candidate to have something done, whether it be um, you know rehab or a surgery type thing. But it'd be really nice to have him back for the majority of next season. I think. Uh, depending on how things go over the next couple, three weeks, uh, between, between now and the All-Star break, when he's likely going to be able to, uh, uh, to come back and, and perform during the second half, uh, I think some decisions will have to be made about are we going to you know, have the ability to, to get him ready to be one on our opening day roster next year and be a component, be a key for the pitching staff, or we're going to have to make some adjustments and, 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 and really do something that you don't want to talk about, and that's possibly have surgery. You just sounded right now like a professional broadcaster. <laughs> I guess that's why you are. Thank you so much for joining us. You got it. Lance. All right, Jeff Montgomery, stay with us. We have more Sports Sunday right after this.